Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so this morning I just want to take a couple of minutes to um, share some thoughts on this idea of pre-tribulation rapture. All right, so I want to encourage you, anybody that might be watching, to think about what it is that you believe. All right, so let's take this as example. The pre-tribulation rapture. Now, I could kill that idea with one verse, right? It's so, to me, so incredibly anti-Scripture, anti-Jesus Christ. It's anti the Word of God because the Word of God clearly says immediately after the tribulation Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and gathers together the elect according to this pre-tribulation rapture theory the rapture happens before the tribulation scripture is very clear here immediately after the tribulation now and for whatever reason, people want to try to mix tribulation in with the wrath of God. Uh, there's no reason to. If you do a word search on tribulation, there's never any confusion in regards to what that what it's talking about, what it means. There's no use of this word in reference to the wrath of God that is to come. And 25 times, if you wanted to do a word search on it, you can see for yourself, it's never confused with the wrath of God. Never. Not once. Not a single time. All right. In fact, even Jesus says, we are in tribulation. That the world is the tribulation that we go through. It's not rocket science. This world is full of tribulation. And we're going through it. And when this world comes to an end, the tribulation comes to an end. All right. It's not rocket science. It's not hard to understand. It's not hard to figure out. But people, for whatever reason, I, in order to support their you know comic book doctrine Jesus I think they do it just to mock the Word of God and to take advantage of people that don't read the Bible and I think um, it's people themselves that don't read the Bible don't believe the Bible I mean, they can read it but they don't if they don't believe it they can't understand it so anyways think about this right now just to imagine, let's just play out this theory, or whatever, this idea, in our head. Right now, is right now, and then the rapture comes, the rapture comes, and right, we're lifted up out of this world, and then so all that's left on the earth are the unsaved right I mean I guess there's two ways to look at this right one way to be that hey we get raptured we, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible right and so is those of us that are in our glorified bodies, do we go through seven years of tribulation? Is this what this talk about? And just for the record, by the way, <clears throat> there is no seven-year tribulation in the Bible anywhere at all. It's not found anywhere. I can't show you where it's at. I can't show you that it's not there because it's not there. People are just making up stuff. And 
to them. That's why I call it comic book doctrine. These guys are jokers. Not picking on this guy at all. He's going through uh, what he's learned about these different doctrines, okay? Just for the record. Alright, so whoever, I, I don't know who goes through the tribulation, what, the saved? Wait a second. So you got the rapture, and then what? Seven years of tribulation, and then the second coming. Was this was this the first coming then? Wait a second. You got the rapture, which is when the Lord comes in the clouds of heaven. Right? So you got the rapture when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. That's the rapture when he comes. When he comes immediately after the tribulation, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's Jesus. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man. That's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's Jesus. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 Behold He comes with clouds. He's talking about Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven and every eye shall see him and they also which pierce from all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so a man. All the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. And then, and then he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together the rapture. His elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. It's the rapture. Second Peter chapter 3. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. That's the rapture. Well, how do you get a how do you get a how do you get another coming? So he came. God was manifest in the flesh, and he ascended to heaven with the promise that he would return for us. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So he's ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us, which is known as the day of the Lord. And when he does that, he will gather us together to be with him. And and then what? And then seven years of tribulation. And then who comes? Who? What's the second coming? Where'd he go? You mean he comes and gathers us? I'm confused. That where I am, <clears throat> there you may be also. So are we gonna? So you're going to come again, and then we're going to take off, and then shouldn't this be the third coming? Does not make any sense? If Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and then shall appear the sign of Jesus 
and he shall send his angels to gather together his elect. But oh, this don't make any sense. First Thessalonians four. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> So then, of course, in Matthew 13, we get the parable of the wheat and the tare. All right, the end of the world. You know, if you consider Matthew 24, the disciples asked Jesus, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the end of the world is when the sun is dark and the moon not given her light, and the stars have fallen from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shaken. And Jesus shall appearing in the clouds of heaven and gathering together his elect. That's the end of the world. So in Matthew 13, when it talks about a parable, when Jesus talks about the parable of the wheat and the tare, it very clearly says the harvest is the end of the world. Alright, so we can draw a parallel there. And in the harvest, time of the harvest, they gather the wheat into the barn, which is equivalent to us, equivalent to the angels gathering us together to meet the Lord in the air and then the tares are put in bundles and burned which is equivalent to 2 Peter chapter 3 the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up but glory to God we're going to be lifted up raptured up out of this world. And this stems from a prophecy given in Genesis 3 when the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The Lord is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever and ever. And that's the judgment of God. The harvest. The time of the harvest is the end of the world. That's the judgment. The great day of the Lord. That's judgment day. When the saved are separated from the unsaved and the unsaved are burned. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Wow! <laughs> 